الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continuing on in our study of gentleness the foundation principles of refutation da'wah and clarification we reach the second portion of the treaties where the sheikh said confirming that with his statements meaning confirming that gentleness and the obligation to command the good and the forbid forbid the evil with gentleness is uh, affirmed by Sheikh bin Baz's statement rahimahullah ta'ala he said the Sheikh said no doubt it is obligatory upon the Muslims to unify their ranks and consolidate their voice upon the truth and aid one another upon righteousness and piety opposing the enemies of Islam as Allah commanded that with his statement azawajal and hold firmly to the rope of the law together and do not become divided. And he warned against division with his statement, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not be like those who became divided and differed after the clear proofs had come to them. And those will have a great punishment. So don't be like those who when Bayina came to them, <coughs> they divided and they uh, deviated and then they were punished so this is what can happen to us when we know the truth we know the haq okay? many of these issues we know the truth but the people still they continue to divide they continue to make tibdi of one another without the right to do so without the tools to do so and they do so even in the worst and vile of manners instead of dealing with each other as believers but dealing with each other based on the book and the sunnah, they deal with each other based on just uh, extreme characteristics more often than not. Then the Sheikh said, but it does not necessitate that from the obligations of unity of the Muslims upon the truth and strength upon the rope of Allah that you leave off denouncing evil of whoever did it or believed in it, such as from the Sufis and other than them. Uh, rather, that which is required to be strong upon the rope of the law is enjoining the good, forbidding the evil, and clarifying the truth with legislated proofs to whoever mi is misguided or thinks opposite to it that which is correct. Who thinks opposite to that which is correct. So, that they can be unified upon the truth and reject whatever opposes that, that is what is required with his statement, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and let there be arising from you a nation inviting to all that is good and joining what is right and forbidding what is wrong and those will be the successful so if you want success it's through commanding the good and forbidding evil and part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil is to correct one another when we make a mistake to advise one another to refute one another if necessary refuting the mistake and that does not always have to be public that's the point it's not always that you have to go out on the minbar and speak about brother so-and-so uh, or mention him by name that's that's not always the case sometimes it's sufficient to warn the community if that's a threat to their community about the particular action and to advise the brother in secret that may be sufficient so it's not especially if they're from Ahl Sunnah we're talking about Ahl Sunnah dealing with Ahl Sunnah So then the Sheikh says, when the people of truth are silent from clarifying the mistakes and errors of the mistaken, they have not achieved what Allah has commanded them with, from enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. It is known that a consequence of silence upon forbidding evil is that sin is spread. The one who is mistaken remains upon error, and the mistake, the mistaken one remains upon his mistake. That is in opposition to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated from uh, this advice. Working together upon goodness, commanding with good and forbidding evil, Allah is the possessor of tawfiq. So Imam bin Baz here, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, made it very clear that it's a part of the deen. It's important 
to, to, to correct mistakes, to clarify the mistakes of the person, so that way it would help them and it will protect the community. And that's a part of commanding the good and the forbidden the evil. And that's a part of ta'awun ala bidr wa taqwa la ta'awun ala ithu udwan. And that's a part of, of, of cooperating in righteousness and God fearfulness, taqwa. And not cooperating on sinfulness and enmity. Yes, that's the case even if you are refuting someone or you are clarifying. That, that's a part of ta'awun, that's a part of cooperation because you're cooperating with the rest of the community. You're cooperating with your brother, helping them to come away from their mistake and their fault. That's a type of cooperation because you want good for them. Let's give you an example that maybe is easy, more easily digestible. For example, the parent who has a small child and you love your child, but you see your child is doing something wrong. Your child is going to stick their finger in the, in the light socket. Your child is going to put someone else's, your your guest's uh, cell phone in the fish tank or the fish bowl. Okay, is that from gentle? That's gentle if you just allow your child. Yes, you could be, that could be interpreted as, hey, let's not hurt the feeling. Let him do what he wants. You're, you're loving him. Okay, no. Instead, you have to stop him from doing that harmful thing which can harm him and harm your neighbor's phone. Okay, you are stopping them. That is enjoining something good, and that's forbidding something harmful. Likewise, when you and and you may have to discipline your child too. Maybe they're older and they understand, and you have to discipline them. Tell them what's good and tell and forbid them from that which is wrong, or discipline them either physically or mentally. You know, or you know, by speaking to them and admonishing them, because you admonish your child, that doesn't take anything away from the love. That doesn't take anything away from the cooperation. It doesn't take away anything from your relationship with your child, but rather it's an exercise of goodness, commanding good, sharing good with them because you're responsible for their education and their upbringing. And Sheikh bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala said, it is obligatory to say it is not from the Salafi scholars to accuse those people we previously mentioned of kufr, of those people we previously mentioned. Indeed, the Salafi scholars clarify the mistakes of those people in their figurative interpretation of many of the attributes of Allah, and they clarify the opposition of such ide ideologies to the methodology of the Ummah Salaf. That is not takfir. Uh, nor tearing the united ummah, nor splitting up the ranks. It is advising for pure intellectual proofs. Uh, it is advising for the sake of Allah and His worshippers, clarifying the truth, refuting whoever opposes it with pure intellectual proofs. It is from upholding that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obliga uh, obligated upon His scholars from clarifying the truth, not concealing it, calling to Allah and guiding to His path. If the people of the truth remain silent from clarifying it, then the mistaken will continue upon their mistakes and other people will follow them in that. That's very important, Habitif Allah, that knowing that this is a duty upon the scholars and a duty upon the students, uh, you know, to, to clarify the mistakes uh, of, of one another and of other people. Because that harm, if they are silent, then they're not doing their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps they'll be punished for that. And they are also not doing their duty and their responsibility to the community. And they are allowing the community to perhaps be misguided. If we say that, okay, we know that these guys have this deviant, this, uh, de deviant belief that they say Allah is everywhere. Or they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes mean something that they don't mean. They depart from the, the approach that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in had to the al-asma'i wa sifat. You know, by the divine names and attributes. And then we're silent. We say, no, we're going to be quiet. The Diobandis, the Naqshbandis, the Brailawis, the all these groups, they can just continue doing what they're doing. No, Ahl Sunnah has to refute in order to help correct them and to protect the community. This is what is holding on to the rope. Holding on to the rope altogether is not holding on to falsehood. You know, he, he holds on to the rope with falsehood. This one holds, you're not even holding on to the same rope. The rope is for the Hablillah. It's the Qur'an, meaning the, the correct understanding of the Qur'an, and the correct understanding of the Sunnah, and the correct understanding of the method of the Salaf. This is the Hablillah that we're ordered to unite upon and 
quote steadfast to and defend. Then he said, secondly, those who remain silent incur the sin of concealing the, uh, that Allah, what Allah commanded upon them when he said, indeed those who conceal what we sent down of clear proofs and guidance after we made it clear for the people in the scripture, those are cursed by Allah and cursed by those who curse, except for those who repent and correct themselves and make evident what they conceal. Those I will accept their repentance and I am the accepting of repentance, the most, the, the merciful. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking in the Quran that it's an obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent clear signs, ayat, qawniya wa shari'iyya. Koniya meaning from the creation and so forth. Shari'iyah meaning the Quran. Verses of the Quran to show us clear signs. It's been made clear. But those who depart from that clarity, it's on them to repent. So they have to be made, their mistakes, they need to be, uh, be alerted to their mistakes. Then the Shaykh said, Surely Allah took a pact with the scholars of the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, that they will clarify to the people and not conceal it. They were defamed due to their, their turning their backs, and Allah cautioned us from following them. So if Ahlul Sunnah remains silent from clarifying mistakes that are in opposition to the book and the, the book and the Sunnah, then we can see the facade that results from that. That if Ahl Sunnah is silent with regards to the to the book uh, and the mistakes that the people make regarding the book and the Sunnah, then who's going to enjoy good and forbid evil? He said, and so Bin Baz said then, that if they're silent, then they are imitating the people of the book whom the anger of Allah is upon and are misguided. So Ahlul Sunnah has a duty, and that's why it's important to know that these are affairs, that it is from the religion of Islam to command the good and the forbid the evil, correct one another in, in our mistakes. But I think what some people have a problem with is the manners in which that is done. So it's very important for us to return back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sabil of the Sabil of Mubini, Sabil uh, Salaf Asale, to know how to correctly uh, correct people uh, when they mistake, how to be with them. Should we be harsh? Should we be gentle? What What is the correct approach? And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Muhammad.